we're live in five, four, three, two, one. Live from the GME studio, it's Good Morning Entrepreneurs. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Good Morning Entrepreneurs. Are you an entrepreneur who has felt like you were all alone on your business adventure? Well, you're in the right place. You know, being an entrepreneur can be lonely and challenging at times, looking for people to bounce ideas off of and get feedback. Welcome to Good Morning Entrepreneurs. The show designed by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs just like you. Keep watching for your dose of entrepreneurial fun with the roving reporters and of course, Kim and Carrie. As we like to say around here, buckle up, buttercup. Good morning, entrepreneurs, and welcome to show number 56. Good morning, Chillo. Good morning, Kat. Good morning, Adam. Good morning. Good morning. I can't stop dancing. My head <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> Good morning. And good morning to you watching. We're excited you're here with us for another great show. We can't believe it's show number 56, y'all. I, I look at that and I think, really? Is that right? But it is 56 shows in. That's awesome. It's very exciting. So we're just going to go right for the gold and we're going to run over to entrepreneur land. <laughs> We hope you grab your coffee and join us because this is the best part of um, what you can have with a cup of coffee, and that is GME, y'all. We have a theme for each show, and this week's show is connecting with community. So my definition of community may not be everybody's, but it's a group of people with who support each other and are intertwined for the good of everyone. They have a common goal, which for us is building a business that we own and doesn't own us. I don't know what else you could say about that. I know you want us to talk about that, but that's like perfection right there. So I'll just say, I agree. <laughs> Thank you. And I agree with what Kat said. <laughs> One thing I learned about the word community is the word unity as part of it. And that um, hit home when I heard that one, because it really is about that common goal that everybody has in that, that group of people. And Jill, actually, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had a roving reporter video a few months ago about unity in community. I did. I did. So you can go back through the old episodes and look for that video. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember which show it was. But, it but I, I will look I it up also, afterwards. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. Oh, no, no. You go ahead, Kat. I was just saying I'll look it up afterwards. No, I was just going to say that it, it made me think that, you know, even if you don't have a business, find a community with a common bond where you feel like you belong, I think is is important, too. I want to belong. I don't want to be like by myself on an island. I want to belong. <laughs> and then we could listen to the song, We Belong Every Day. <laughs> we belong. <laughs> and that's how I feel when I come into this community is every day. That should be my walk-on song into everything we do is We Belong. Yeah. All right, you heard it here, folks. We expect it to happen, Adam. That's right. I've been <laughs> give me a call. <laughs> Thinking of belonging, Adam. We yes. <laughs> Speaking of belonging, I think it's time that we go to the GME Chronicles and find out all the great things we did together this week as a community. So Jill Olish... Take it away.
Thank you, Carrie and Kim. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the GME Chronicles. My name is Joe Olish. We have exciting updates for you today, April 12th, 2024. The GME Chronicles is the celebration of moving the needle in our businesses, and we want to show you what is possible when we come together. The total of 21 events this week included Cats Pilates classes, Yvonne's H Agitator Club, and My Sexy Businesses, Sticky Note Time Accountability Group, TNT Website Workshop, a Book Launch Party, Groundwork Brigade Open House, and six Mastermind Sessions. We'd like to say congratulations to the entrepreneurs who completed round 23 of the Fire Up Mastermind, and welcome to those entering the 25th round of Fire Up Mastermind. Clubhouse, Kat and Adon hosted their room on Monday, Donna and Adam hosted the My Sexy Business Not Creepy Room on Wednesday. Myself and Linda hosted on Thursday. On LinkedIn Audio, Donna hosted her room on Tuesday. Adam posted two interviews and My Sexy Business posted 103 YouTube clips, as well as went live with show 55 of Good Morning Entrepreneurs. Seven new podcast episodes dropped last week. Go give them a listen. We have Bearing It All with Call Me Adam, Mucked Up My Self Care, Sisters in Service, Late Bloomer Living, The Money Barista, Buckets and Boom Gates, and the 5 and 15 Interviews Leadership Series. This week's total of 134 brings our grand total to 4,337 amazing things. We look forward to more updates next week. If you are ready to join in on the fun around here, we hope to see you tonight at the Fierce Entrepreneur Summit. Next week, we have the Money Barista Club and save the date for the next Groundwork Brigade open house on May 1st and 2nd. Back to you, Kim and Carrie. I'm thinking cheers, y'all. Cheers. And just as a reminder, I'm ready for the Fierce Entrepreneur Summit tonight. <laughs> Adam, I'm ashamed. I didn't even think to pull mine out. So I usually, I usually have mine, but mine's dirty. I already had a cup this morning. Is it me or do the weekly events through in our community keep going up? Yes, Kathy. It's, do it's not just you. I'm just, I'm, I thought, is it just me? You could say it's not. It's okay. Just say, no, Kat, you're wrong. It's okay. I look at it every week, Kat, and I'm like you. I'm thinking, really? Wow. Like, but that's the beauty of community. And I want to say really quickly for you watching and seeing all of this, we are not trying to be braggy or braggadocious about what we're doing. We want you to be inspired. We want you to see what happens because every single one of those things started at zero. Zero podcast episodes, zero books, zero, like whatever it is, they started at zero. And this is where we're up to in the last couple of years. And I think that that is absolutely incredible. So we just want to frame that well, y'all. And we need to do one more cheers to to Carrie, who was not able to be with us today because she is still out saving the world. So cheers to Carrie. I have one more request about that. Carrie, we miss you and we love you. And I also think Jillo needs to read her coffee cup out loud. Oh goodness. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> It was gifted this beautiful mug. It says, chaos coordinator, someone who solves problems you never knew existed in ways that will blow your mind. See also ninja, rock star, and legend. <laughs> and that fits for you and Carrie. I'll just say that. And Pilates instructors. Oh, and no, I'm just Kat, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Kat and Adam and every associate producers. Yep. <laughs> I about messed up, y'all. Y'all, let me rewind that and say everybody on stage is a rock star and a legend and a ninja, and I'm taking on them. How's that? All the things, all the people, all the things. So I guess we should move on. And Jill, what is the question of the week? Here's a question from one of our viewers this week. 
What does an entrepreneur do when life gets in the way and there is a shift in the adventure? Ooh, I love this one. Do y'all want to go first or you want me to like just blow out of the gate? It's up to you. <laughs> just let's blow out rogue. of the gate, Kim. No, let's go rogue. <laughs> we'll leave her last so we can. <laughs> oh, all right, Captain, you, you start. <laughs> <You're taking away. laughs> well, I. You know, life is going to happen. And when you go on any trip or any adventure, it's not a straight line. Mm -hmm. And there are stops along the way. You know, if you're taking a trip from New York to California, you know, there are stops along the way. And some of the stops are, are good stops and some of them maybe not so good. But you continue. So you may have to stop for however long. It just you cut back a little bit what you need to to get through the the, the adventure I like the way someone said that um, and then continue on through that. So don't get frustrated. Just know that it happens to all of us and keep it moving. It's funny you say that Kat, because I feel like there was a point last year where I got to a place where I just couldn't do everything. I was getting ready to move apartments. So I had to, pack everything up and I I couldn't continue to do my interviews, do my podcast, do mastermind, GME, everything. And so I had to scale back a little bit and I chose to scale back on the amount of interviews I took on and on the amount of podcast episodes I released. And I had to make that choice because what, what was I, I, I didn't want to run myself ragged so I made that choice and I was able to get through that phase. And then after I moved, I still had to be careful because I had to unpack and all of those things. So now I feel like I'm at a point where I'm able to take on a little bit more. Now that's not to say every single person start asking me to do an interview, but I can, I still have a, a set amount of interviews I try to take on at a time because I, I, the scale back showed me, I actually like that because I don't want to be overwhelmed. So I would rather do a few less interviews a month and not be overwhelmed and know that I can handle it than have to go uh, crazy <laughs> over getting everything done. I was about to say something I think inappropriate. So <laughs> I just to myself. <laughs> And let me just say this, Adam Rothenberg, I want everybody to go to your entertainment platform, callmeadam.com, because you can see the evidence of how many interviews he's done. Even though you scaled back, you had so much like already on there that everyone could go and enjoy. So Adam, I think you made the perfect choice. That's just my little two cents worth. Thank and you did a good job too, Adam, just saying. Thank you. Yes. I will say, um, for me, it's shifting our expectations and allowing yourself to not feel guilty for being flexible. Mic drop. Like, that's just a mic drop, y'all. <laughs> just saying. It's hard. But the guilt <laughs> does happen, though, Jill. It you know, it, it it, You feel like, I want to get this stuff done. But you have to, be, I think, have a whole lot more patience during this time and know that you will get it done. It's just not getting done in the time frame you expected. Well, Carrie taught me a word that I want to share because I think it's important for this question. And that is she taught me about pausing instead of stopping. So when we stopped one of our podcasts for a little bit, it was a pause and I just thought, oh, I can never go back. But the truth is, it was just paused. It's about to come back loud and loud and proud, as we say. <laughs> but I think that that's a great thing for other entrepreneurs to know that all of us have life going on. All of us have things that happen. And don't get discouraged from it. It is just, it is the way that this adventure works. <laughs> I love that term pause because that's what I feel like. I had to put a pause on where I was doing my interviews, how I was, how many I was doing, but that doesn't mean I wasn't going to come back to them. I just had to 
take a break. And there was a time where I feel like I also put a hard pause on my podcast. And, and then I did go back, I went back to it as time allowed. And now I'm back with it. And rocking it, by the way. I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw Mel B and Mark Summers and I, I can't even remember all the names, but y'all are being pressed. Just go, just go to callmeadam.com. That's, that's my best thing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kim. And, and I, I, I feel like we need to move on before it somehow is becoming the, <laughs> let's just continue to promote Adam's show. So, <laughs> well, I will say when we think that life might be getting in the way of things, maybe it's time to spend a few extra minutes in bed and do some stretches. So, Let's go to our first half of the Salty Sisters with a segment on health and wellness for entrepreneurs. The freaking fabulous Kat Corchado, proud US Air Force veteran, health and wellness professional, founder of Small Space Pilates, podcast host, published author, and GME roving reporter. Hi, everybody. For the next several weeks, I'm going to be showing you exercises you can do right in your own bed, meaning... You wake up in the morning, you stretch a little bit. You can do these simple stretches, which will take altogether maybe five minutes to help make your body feel better before your feet ever touch the ground to start your day. What you're gonna do is you can keep one knee bent, but you're gonna bring the other knee into your chest. The goal here is to get the knee coming past your, your ear but stretching this part of your hip away. So think of opposition, the knee coming this way, the hip going this way. And pull your stomach in and just breathe. Relax in the stretch. This is helping your back. And then switch sides. Again, adjust, pull the knee in, stretch this part of the hip away, and release. So you can do that one stretch over the next few weeks you can pick the ones you like best. Some are gonna feel better than others. But again, if you do them all together, they take less than five minutes. Always, always check with your doctor, physician, and or physical therapist to make sure these are appropriate for you. So till, until next time, back to you, Kim and Carrie. Oh my goodness. I love the green room. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Watching everybody attempting these as we go along with Kat, it's great. <laughs> Yes, Jill. I was going to say, I just did those stretches in my chair. And I will say I, I I injured my back a little earlier in the week and that felt really good. So thank you, Kat. Yes, thank you. And if you are interested in more of stretches, stretching and other things for your body movement wise, go check out Kat because she does have a free week of classes for you to try it out. See if she is someone you can... Um, connect with for your community. Yes. And I love how Kat says that everybody should feel good in their body. So that is one of my favorite sayings that Kat has. So I think we should go to the second half of the Salty Sisters with Yvonne Marchese for a segment on entrepreneurship later in life. Yvonne Marchese, age agitator, podcast host, community builder, branding photographer, published author, event speaker, and GME roving reporter. Thanks, Kim and Carrie. This is Yvonne Marchese coming to you as a roving reporter for Good Morning Entrepreneurs. I'm your resident age agitator here to talk about later in life entrepreneurship. Have you ever heard the quote, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. First of all, I question the whole idea that you can go faster by going alone. And I'll tell you why. There have been so many times when I have tried to get a project going on my own. And what ends up happening is I get into my well-worn thought ruts about what I'm capable of. And I get into a loop that I can't seem to get out of. So I want to encourage you to reach out if you find yourself in that position where you're spinning your wheels. Call somebody, 
have a board of directors in mind, your own little board of directors that you can consult with who you trust. Somebody who's just maybe that one step ahead of you in business who can help you out. Surround yourself with a community of people who get what it is to be doing what you're doing so that you can support them and they can support you. And my contention is that you will go further and you will go faster. Back to you, Kim and Carrie. All right, Yvonne. Let me, Kat, can I just tell you what this made me think of when she talks about community and go together? She made sure. me think of the end of Greece where they all go, we go together. Like, la, I la, know. La, la, sing, sing, oh my God. Because it made it feel as though they were still going to be together even after they had graduated. Yes, definitely. And I don't ever want to graduate from Mastermind. And speaking <laughs> of Mastermind, um, let's go to our first commercial. And But Adam, don't you want to talk about um, Yvonne's book first? Actually, do I do. And being the fact that I was thinking of Greece, it made me think of being playful and that you can be playful at any age. And Yvonne has a book out called In Full Bloom, A Guide to Aging Playfully. And just the fact that that Yvonne is surfing on the cover of it already invites me into just how much fun this book is. So she gives a lot of great ideas in it about how you can be playful at any age. And I, I love that about Yvonne. And I will say, Yvonne, your segment today made me feel to be very playful. So that's why I came back from the segment singing. I think even the cover just makes you want, even if you don't know what aging playfully is or even any idea, it, you, it makes you want to just open the book and just see what it's about. Don't you think? Yes. 100%. <laughs> Thank you, Yvonne. And now it's time to go to one of our sponsors for Groundwork Brigade Mastermind. This show is sponsored by Groundwork Brigade Mastermind. Are you an entrepreneur who is focused on making an impact, but you haven't figured out how to make an income doing it? We spent years trying to figure out how to do both. And we realized the business adventure is not a one size fits all. I'm Kim White. I'm the founder and fierce leader of the My Sexy Business team. And I'm Carrie Zab, Aussie bucket of swearing sunshine. And she's a brilliant entrepreneur, by the way. We both understand how it feels to believe we are the only ones who can't figure things out. So we decided to join forces so we could get in the trenches with you. We lead a very special mastermind group so you can be confident in strategically implementing the right things in the right order so that you too can get the best possible results. We cover a variety of topics based on what you need, including building a business that you own and doesn't own you. We even address things like social media strategy and simple tech solutions. If you would like to meet other entrepreneurs who are living proof of what is possible, come and join us at Groundwork Brigade Mastermind Open House. Oh man, I love this community and how we've all come together and really gotten really good results from the work we're putting into in Groundwork Brigade. And um, Kat, I think... Donna is one of those people that actually is really getting some great results from all the work she's doing. Cause I know she's out. Um, she was out this week at a really cool event that she was able to participate in. And I didn't even know what she is going to share with us, but it is something fun, fun, fun. I can't wait for you to see it along with everybody else watching. So we're going to go ahead over to Donna for her surprise and delight marketing segment today. Donna Bender is a certified Giveologist branded product specialist, corporate marketing trainer, creator of The Giving Plan, show host, published author, and GME roving reporter. Thanks, Kim and Carrie. This is Donna Bender coming to you today as a roving reporter and a Bavarian pretzel for Good Morning Entrepreneurs. Today's surprise and delight marketing segment is about finding more fun holidays to show your appreciation to your clients. That's right, folks. 
On April 26, we will be celebrating something that is a bit salty, a tad twisty, and delicious. National Pretzel Day. You know, in a world of marketing, finding unique and memorable ways to show appreciation to our clients is what sets us apart. Yes, that is right. You can twist, tie, knot, and dip into a whole world of pretzels. It is a day to celebrate not just a delicious snack, but the intertwined relationships we've built with our clients. So, need some good pretzel ideas? Well, here are a couple. You can uh, give them a do-it-yourself pretzel kit. It's a wonderful way for the whole family to get together. It comes with all the essentials, and they come out looking like this. Impress. And then there is the Pretzelicious. Pretzelicious. Yeah, it's that. Um, tin that comes with all different kinds of pretzels. You have the nuggets. You have chocolate-covered pretzels with sprinkles. There are yogurt pretzels. There are gluten-free pretzels. You, you could put a kit together. And then we have the eco-friendly pretzel bag. It's reusable, and it has a pretzel motif. It's cute, it's eco-friendly, and people will continue to use it. So National Pretzel Day is more than just about enjoying our favorite snack. It's about twisting the ordinary into something extraordinary, just like we do with our businesses every day. So let's raise a pretzel to our wonderful clients and wish them a happy National Pretzel Day. It's going to be twistacular. Back to you, Kim and Carrie. She just made me really hungry for pretzels. I'm just going to say, I'm just like, I want to go and get a snack now. And it has to be a pretzel and I don't have any. So I'm now I'm mad. Thank you, Donna. I loved the new word, twistacular. <laughs> so great. <laughs> well, to get more fun nuggets or yeah, nuggets, like pretzel nuggets from Donna. <laughs> Stop it, Jill. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> she has um, her LinkedIn audio room on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Central called Noon Nuggets, which is so appropriate now this week. But <laughs> uh, go check her out over there. She loves the company for some great conversations about surprise and delight marketing. I've learned a lot from Donna about what to what to do, what not to do, how to, you know, do marketing, you know, in, in a way that, that fits me and my business. And so I, I truly appreciate her for that. But also speaking of conversations, let's go to our next roving reporter on conversations and storytelling for entrepreneurs with Linda Bonney. Linda Bonney is a published author, conversationalist, writer, storyteller, podcast host, production manager, and GME roving reporter. Good morning, entrepreneurs. Today, I'd like to talk about follow-up in conversation. Let's say you've met a fellow entrepreneur and really started chatting about your business journey and adventures. What happens from there? Maybe you've exchanged numbers. Maybe you've exchanged details. However, often the follow-up get, can get lost in a long list of things to do. Remembering that we are quite busy and remembering that conversations take effort and time. Often I find it easier to make a commitment on the spot for a follow-up or a related activity that may have been identified as a common interest. If you've exchanged ideas, think about how they might be talked about further. Think about how you can solidify the connection to the other person, especially if it's a relationship which you feel would benefit your entrepreneurial journey. Following up conversations takes a commitment and time. So be gentle with yourself and remember the conversations that are worthwhile following up. That's it for now. Back to you in the GME studio. I love Linda's segments, you know, especially about follow-up because follow-up takes a little bit of effort also. And I think when I follow up with people, I might just send them a quick text or an email saying, I so enjoyed 
our conversation. You know, I hope that we can talk again soon. And I leave it at that. And I find that gets a lot of, well, not a lot, but it does get feedback. I get people to, to respond back. And if you don't know Linda Bonney, you should, because she is, wow, she's an author three times over. So yes, she has stories with the Sunday Roast, the book collect. Yes, I said collection. I'll say it again. Collection number one, two, and three. She's a force to be reckoned with. Um, get her books and read them because there's some amazing stories. And you might even recognize some names in there. I'm just going to say. I love Linda's podcast. I love her books that she parlayed from her podcast. And follow up is such a great is is such a great thing. And Kat, I love I love what you said about how you do your follow up. So I think it's time to follow up actually with our findability queen now, Denise Malay. And we are going to go to a segment on helping entrepreneurs be findable online. Denise Malay, a findability queen, tech simplifier, game show host, published author, website builder, founder of M Media Group and GME, a roving reporter. Good morning, entrepreneurs. Today, we are going to talk about duplicate content. Now, I know we've talked a lot about repurposing content, and it's a terrific way to expand your reach and impact across platforms and different kinds of media so that your people, your customers and clients out there using search can find the format that fits best for them. But what I'm going to do is share a warning with you. You don't want to have exactly the same thing in two different places. You have to make slight changes to it, different headings, headings, titles, whatever, because they won't know the programs that evaluate your content that read it won't know how to choose between one or the other and tell somebody where to go if they're exactly the same. Why does this happen? Well, imagine two identical addresses out there in different locations in the same city, right? How would a GPS tell you where to go? It couldn't. It couldn't give you directions to different two different places for the same address. So, you know, search engine programs are not quite as basic as this one, but it's the same principle, okay? The robots reading content have to make decisions. They are more advanced, but they're still robots. They're still programs. It's still yes or no, black or white. It's there's no ties, there's no maybes. So change your content slightly in the different places you're putting it so that it appears to be unique, and then you won't run into this problem. Um, we want you to do this because ultimately we want you to be fine. If they can't find you, they can't do business with you. Back to you, Kim and Carrie. Oh my gosh. I love the, that tip. And it's something I have been doing on my entertainment platform. If, if I've done a video interview that I then parlay into a podcast. I make sure that the titles are different and things like that. And I'm very grateful to Denise for those tips. Can I just say that when she talked about, you know, the same address on the same street made me remember this memory I had of, we went to Atlanta and we had driven to Atlanta and we were looking for, wait for it, Peach Tree Street. And found out there were like eight of them. <laughs> so I hear you loud and clear, Denise. I do. <laughs> yes. Her information that she shares has been so helpful in making sure that we have that variety in our content that we're putting out there so that we, we are findable. And maybe even that someone might... Um, see something a little bit differently. So they connect with us because they saw something out there that just was a little different than something else someone else might have seen. And one way that you can connect with Denise is through her book, Be Findable. If they can't find you, they can't do business with you. And this is a great, a great resource to have that you can get some of Denise's tips and tricks through here. And you can connect with Denise more about it. 
And I'm going to say, and this is a special request that Denise should always wear the crown. I'm just going to say it looks good on her. That's for me, Denise. I'm just saying. <laughs> so I think it's time that we go to our next commercial with Carrie Zarb, who is the money barista. Have you ever looked at your bank account or credit card statement and found charges you forgot to cancel? Do you have a sinking feeling that you are spending money on things you no longer use? I'm Kerry Zarb, the Money Barista, and I share a free tool that has saved users over $116,000. If you want to get in control of your recurring payments, then the Money Barista Savings Tool is the free step for you. I host a live tour of the savings tool every quarter. It's completely free for you to attend and get this amazing tool. Let me show you how this tool can save you money and help you track your progress. Head over to kerryzarp.com forward slash savings to register for the next live tour. And while you're there, grab your free and private copy of the Money Barista Savings Tool so that you can get started on saving money today. Wow. Can I just say that I'm not part of the community yet. It's on my sticky note. I just want to say, but I have used um, that tool and it's amazing to see how much, number one, how much you're putting out per month, but also to keep track of all the things that you're not using or have forgotten that you use and to get rid of that and then see how much money you're saving. Definitely. And I'm so looking forward to next week where she will be having the tour. So super excited to be able to share that with others who have not seen the tool yet because it is super helpful. Oh, absolutely. Let's see. Well, I think we have her segment coming up. So we do. we head over there? Absolutely. So again, it's a double whammy with Carrie Zarb and who is AKA the money barista using the right tool. Carrie Zarb is a rock star podcaster, brilliant entrepreneur, director of Zinc Business Solutions, cover girl, mastermind leader, and GME roving reporter. Let me introduce you to Carrie Zarb, the money barista. In her famous words, let's go, it's coffee time. She also says happy biz beans to you because she's a financial guru. She hosts the Money Barista podcast. She has the Money Barista savings tool that she created and has saved over $100,000 for this community. She also is the leader of the Money Barista Club where she helps everybody get in control of their finances and she's the author of the Money Barista book, All Things Money and Coffee. She loves beans of all kinds. Welcome to the Virtual Cafe for this week's segment about business finances and today I want to talk about are you using the right tool for your digits? There's so many options out there when it comes to working with our business finances. Right now, I want you to consider how you're going to work best. What is going to be the best tool for you? If you're a pen and paper person, maybe that's the answer for you. If you do feel comfortable with spreadsheets, there's so much you can do with spreadsheets to help you control your business finances. Accounting platforms look amazing. However, we've got to consider how much time it's going to take us to learn to use that program or platform. The ultimate goal is that you want to sit down and work on your business finances. The utopia for everyone in business is that we feel comfortable with the finances and that we understand our money and we have that opportunity to work on it on the right platform to suit us. Don't think about what so-and-so down the road is doing. You might need to consider that recommendation from your accountant for this whiz-bang platform that they want you to work on because maybe it suits them more than it suits you. No matter which tool you choose to work with your business finances, remember that you can make a change. Nothing is set in stone, everything is in pencil. And as you grow or your business grows, you can make the change to a different platform at the right time. 
at the end of the day, you are who matters when it comes to working on your business finances. So I want you to have the power of choice to make the decision that's right for you. That's all today from the Virtual Cafe. Back to you, Kim. Oh my gosh. I love Carrie's segments and I love how she gives us the power to make those decisions about our business finances. And personally, I have chosen to use the tools she has in the Money Barista Club, which it is meeting next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. And I love the the tools she has in there available for us because that has that is what has helped me be able to get in control of my business finances. I've tried so many tools and gotten lost in the weeds and then not work for me. And I've had to dial it back. And since joining the club, I have been using the tools that she's been able to provide in there for us to use. And it has kept it so much simpler and less heavy for me when it comes to that heavy topic of business finances. Agreed. Well, I'd love to introduce our next segment, Adam, if we can head over to Pat with the Military Minute. I'm curious about the knowing your passion and not knowing all the business pieces. I feel like this is such a encouragement for other people that are coming out of the military. Everyone needs income. But when you're passionate about something, it changes it into something different. Can you speak to that for a minute of how income starts to come with passion when you put things in place? Absolutely. If you're in business and something isn't your passion and you're not passionate about it at all, it feels heavy. You just think about the money, the money that's not coming in. But when you have that passion about whatever it is, whatever that thing is, and you start to learn the steps to having a business that doesn't own you and doing it in such a way that it feels like you're not moving at all. When in actuality, you're making big waves and being patient. And all of a sudden it just starts to happen and you're not forcing the issue. So I think when you're passionate, but you don't know all the steps, you can learn the steps, but the passion is going to get, the passion's halfway there. It's like when you're playing sports and I'm sorry, I'm a sports person and you don't have all the skill, but you have so much passion. That's going to carry you so much further than someone who has natural ability and no passion at all, because your work ethic speaks for you. When you're passionate about something, you're you're willing to work at it and work at it and work at it until you get it. Oh my God, so well said, Kat. That gave me chill bumps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, but so true. Passion t- can take you so much further. So, yeah. thank you, Kim. I actually feel like everybody bringing bringing the conversation back to community is. I actually feel like everybody in our community is very passionate about what they do, and that I don't feel like anybody's in it just for the money. We all truly love what our our individual businesses yeah and what you had said about maybe we didn't have all the steps and that comes with learning as we were figuring out how to do our passion in business and so it comes absolutely with finding a community so i like that part too like this one yeah. just saying that's right that's right <laughs> And and we do hope that that everybody, speaking of community, we do hope that everybody comes to join us for the Fierce Entrepreneur Summit tonight at 6 p.m. Central Time. So we look forward to celebrating 
the community there. And with you watching and engaging in the live chat, you can be part of the conversation with us. So we hope you will tune in. And speaking of another community member, it is time to go to Jill Olish's segment for Mama Entrepreneurs. Jill Olish is the founder of Mama Outspoken, executive team leader, postpartum awareness advocate, vision board party host, event coordinator, podcast host, GME associate producer, and roving reporter. Thanks, Kim and Carrie. Becoming a virtual assistant, working from home, and then turning into an entrepreneur gave me the opportunity to figure out the things that I did and didn't like in business, the different tasks that one needs to do behind the scenes, the different things that one has to do in order to market themselves. What did I love? I loved Instagram. It was easy. It was possible for me to do with a baby in one arm and a phone in the other arm. But I quickly learned that it wasn't exactly all I thought it was going to be. I also had the opportunity to try different things with other clients and figure out what parts of their businesses did I really like doing for them? What was I good at? What did I enjoy? What worked and what didn't work for me? And there's been a long road of figuring things out like that, but the flexibility that being an entrepreneur has in that route is so ideal, especially for moms or new parents or anyone really starting out or transitioning into their entrepreneur adventure. So I encourage you to find the things that you really like doing, but don't forget about the things you don't like doing because they still need to be done. And when you get those things figured out, you'll have more opportunity to find more things that you really do enjoy. Back to you, Carrie and Kim. Oh my God, Jill Olish. I love it. And I love the analogy of Instagram in one hand and a baby on the other. It is like my favorite thing that you said. I don't know how she did it because, you know, back in the day, there wasn't an Instagram. I don't think I could have done it. Maybe I could have, but, you know, I want to be Jill when I grow up. I'm just going to say. <laughs> you definitely could have done it, Kat, because you're freaking fabulous. But Jill is a oh, yeah, Jill of all right. trades. So. <laughs> God, thank you for the reminder, Adam. You're welcome. You're welcome. And Jill does it because she's a Jill of all trades. So she can she can do everything. Agreed. And, and there's a little secret we have that maybe isn't such a little secret anymore. I'm not sure. But Jill is getting ready to publish her very own book, which is so exciting. And I can't wait for it to be out there and for the whole world to know about Jill's journey and and everything that goes into it. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to get into too much trouble. So sorry, Jill, I didn't mean to spill the beans either. Well, speaking of spilling the beans, our next roving reporter has a huge following on his entertainment platform. So our next roving reporter is none other than Adam Rothenberg with Entrepreneurs in Entertainment. Adam Rothenberg is a media personality, interview king, clubhouse manager, published author, event coordinator, red carpet correspondent, GME associate producer, and roving reporter. Thanks, Kim and Carrie. It's Adam, and I am back in the closet for yet another edition of Behind the Curtain. In keeping up with the All My Children Behind the Curtain stories, this one is about Jennifer Bassey, who played man-hungry Marion Colby Chandler for over 30 years on the show. I first met Jennifer in 2002 when she was starring in an off-Broadway production of Moliere's Tartuffe. I have been able to interview Jennifer three times throughout my 15-year career for my entertainment platform, the most recent being this past February. I got this new interview with Jennifer because she specifically asked her press rep to contact me to see if I would talk to her about the event that was coming up. Now, the reason she wanted to talk to me is because she loved our previous interviews together. And if that wasn't enough, after the interview was finished, 
Jennifer then posted on social media how great our interview was. She wrote on her post, loving Adam from Call Me Adam, always fun to play with. And on my post, she commented, darling, always such a great, always such a joy to catch up. We have so much more to chat about. So call me Adam and we'll do lunch. Hugs. What an honor it is to have somebody in your corner who looks forward to speaking with you. So that is today's Behind the Curtain story. It's back to you in the GME studio. What a great story, Adam. I'm, I'm so jelly. You get to speak to all these celebrities. And if you don't know Adam Rothenberg, you should on his entertainment platform, uh, behind the curtain stories, he has over 1500 interviews that you can go and talk about and you'll be there for a while. I'm just going to say, just going through all of, all of it, but he's done such an amazing job. And I am almost, I would bet money on the fact that Adam has a picture for us. Oh, how much money are we talking about? Kat? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a picture in fact. So this is me and Jennifer in 2002 when I got to see her in Moliere's Tartuffe. I waited for her and she was so nice after the show. She took the picture with me. And um, do you want a little bonus behind the curtain story? Of course. Okay. Huh? Well, you'll have to wait on that because I just saw the time. We actually don't have time for a bonus story. So that will have to be another time. That's such a tease, Adam. Don't do that to us. Oh, what can I say? Maybe we'll see it in your digest one weekend. Maybe. <laughs> well, uh, if you have not signed up for Adam's digest, go ahead over to his entertainment platform and go do that. But in the meantime, let's go to our next commercial from one of our sponsors and we'll be back in one minute once upon a time there was a princess from oklahoma living a traveling life in texas when along comes an icy bucket of swearing sunshine when these two girls from opposite ends of the globe met in february 2021 even the universe did not know what it was in for <laughs> Determined to solve world problems for entrepreneurs, we still to this day learn just how similar we are. We have found our passions were too strong not to unite and become the partners in change that we are. <laughs> <laughs> what is a bucket and a boom gate? So a bucket is basically a category or a way to change how you're looking at something big. And a boom gate is a way to protect ourselves. Sometimes we need a boom gate to protect ourselves from ourselves. We have lots of experience of our lifetimes of business and we want to share that with you. We look forward to bringing you weekly episodes of the Buckets and Boom Gates podcast. Well, I feel so connected to everyone in our community as we continue to find all the ways that we can connect with you watching, with each of us in our community. And I know coming up, we are going to go into our next segment where we're going to have to pull up some additional people to talk about how we actually get to connect with people in creating a community. So... Let's have them come on up. <laughs> oh, I'd love to take us to our next segment, Princess Speak. Thank you, Dillo. So Princess Speak is the simple business language for entrepreneurs that our community uses. And flavor is this week's word. And it's one of my favorite words, y'all. Flavor to me means a specific type of human. So my flavor is our community. It's those humans who truly like each other and want to be around each other. My flavor is those who want to make an impact, who are tenacious, also known as stubborn sometimes, <laughs> resilient, and determined. My flavor is also those who want to have fun along this entrepreneurial adventure that we're all on and know that life is too short 
to put up with nonsense. And if I'm not mistaken, Kim, I think we did a podcast episode way back about flavor. I think we did, Jello. So this is one of my favorite pictures ever because I think, you know, when people think flavor, they're always thinking of food and like candy and that kind of stuff. I think our community is sweet and I think it's the right <laughs> flavor. So there you go. <laughs> I love that. I tend to think of flavor as thinking back when I was a child is if you ever tried chasing after someone to be your friend and they didn't want to be your friend and they're not your flavor, because when you have someone who wants to be your friend, it's not a heavy lift. Absolutely. And so I've learned that ever since childhood is, you know, you just get to a point where, okay, it'd be nice, but it's just not happening and that's okay. That's great cat. I have to say. I will say that I am very happy that I found my flavor within this community and not only in the, in everything I'm learning in the community, but within the people of the community. I mean, I literally feel like every single in every single person in this community so far is my flavor. And I say so far because I don't know who's going to come in in the future and I'm excited to meet whoever that is, so. On one of the past summits, um, Fierce Entrepreneur Summits that we had, and I say this because tonight is our next one, but we talked a lot about finding your community and not sticking with just the first one that you try because they may not be your flavor. So I just wanna encourage everybody to take advantage of this definition of flavor and apply it when you are looking for a community to be a part of. And don't settle for those that aren't your flavor. Settle for the ones that really make it worth your while and being part of that community. Can I just say one more thing? I think sometimes you don't know a community is your flavor because I didn't know this community was my flavor <laughs> and until you know I had to take a few tastes and then I said, okay, <laughs> this, this is working. I like this. And I've, I've been ever since, so. <laughs> And you sometimes you think, our flavor. <laughs> and you. sometimes you think a community is going to be your flavor, and then you're in it for a while, and then you realize that they're not your flavor. I mean, I certainly had that experience before coming to the My Sexy Business community. I was in a different community that I felt like was my flavor, and then there was a day where I was like, "Nope, not anymore." <laughs> and I, that's when I started to scale back a little bit and search for a new community. And I'm so grateful that I found the My Sexy Business community. Me too. Same. Me too, y'all. I have to <laughs> say, I love all of y'all and you are my flavor. And I want to add really quickly that, you know, this community is not perfect. We don't want to give an illusion of that everybody's always perfect and always doing what they're supposed to and all that. That is not us. We're a bunch of humans humaning together. So I want to put that out there that we we love this community because it's humany. It's peopley, y'all. Peopley. <laughs> so may you, our incredible entrepreneur watching, find your flavor in your community. And if you aren't already connected, we want to invite you to connect with us. While we may not be everyone's flavor, we have some genuinely caring humans in this community who would love to see you succeed. Love y'all and let's dance it out. Join us next Friday at 7 a.m. Central. This is the team signing off for Good Morning Entrepreneurs.